Ladies and gentlemen, a happy Monday. Last Friday, we started talking about Chapter 4. And for Chapter 4, we had to go through and create a chart of accounts. Okay? For a chart of accounts, there are two types of account classifications. Okay? On the left-hand side, we have balance sheet accounts. And when we think about balance sheet, I need you to think about what always has to balance in accounting. Not debits and credits, the accounting equation. That's the first thing I taught you. We make sure that the accounting equation equals by using debits and credits, but really the basics of everything we've learned has always gone back to that accounting equation. So on your balance sheet accounts, we have assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And that is the first line that goes on the left-hand side is balance sheet accounts. Below that, you put in parentheses 100, and then you write the word asset. Then below that, we write all of our asset accounts. What order do they go? It was a funky word I taught you on Friday. It was something. It starts with an L. No smarties in the room? Oh. So wanted to give somebody a smartie on a Monday morning. So our asset accounts, what order are they listed? I, told you, I taught you about them on Friday, and I said they go in this order, and it starts with an L. Because this is most often what people get wrong on the test for this chapter. I know it's just the first section we're talking about on the, t on the chapter, but I'm already talking about the test. The word starts with L. It's so the first time you would have heard it from me. Any accounting two people know? What's that? Liquidity. You get a smarty. The answer was liquidity. What the heck does that mean? Is that raising any, remembering anything from Friday? Um, how do you think that should turn into cash? Yes. So what account's easiest to turn into cash? Cash. So cash is always going to be your first account, and the account number is going to be 110. Okay. And then depending on the different ones you have on there, then you're probably going to go to your accounts receivables. And if you have multiple accounts receivable, what order do they go in? Alphabetical order. If the name on accounts receivable are people's name, you alphabetize it by last name. If it's the name of a business, you go by the first name of the name of the business, unless it starts with like the or a or an, any of those. You start by the first official word. Okay. And each account number we put on there, we, we separate out by 10. So we go 110, 120, 130, 140. Once we get down with all of our assets, we put in parentheses 200 and we write the word liabilities. All liabilities, say the word payable in them. They're very easy to identify. Accounts payable, blah, whatever the name of the business. All of your accounts payable accounts are going to be listed in alphabetical order by the name of the vendor. Vendor is also another word that we use for accounts payable. Guys, down below. Listen up. Not on the computer now, okay? So after that, we do parentheses 300, we do owner's equity. We have two accounts under owner's equity, and we will always only have two accounts because we are a sole proprietorship organized as a service business. So the first one is going to be your capital account. That will be 310. 320 will always be your drawing. So the name of your owner capital, name of your owner drawing. That is the left-hand side of your chart of accounts. Right-hand side is going to be your income statement account. We have two account classifications for income statements, revenue and expenses. How many revenue accounts do we have? One, and that is sales. The sales account number is 410. Okay. Your expenses, I feel, are the easiest account that you have to classify because it gives you your account classification in the actual account title. If you see the word expense, you think, okay, advertising expense, account classification expense, debit normal balance. Always. Okay, we will always be affecting our expenses as a debit. So on the right-hand side, income statement accounts, you're going to do parentheses, 400 revenue, 410 for sales, the parentheses, um, expenses, and then you'll do 510, 520, 530, whatever, all of your expenses in alphabetical order. Then your business operates for a while. 
And then they may come back and say, hey, I need to add postage expense because we didn't have it in there. That's something I want to track. So then any new accounts that we need to add, we put on the bottom and we put the account number and then we put the account title. And we try to fit it in there. If it fits at the very bottom, you would go to the next increment of 10. Otherwise, you'll go in between to the number 5. That was my crash course of what we did on Friday. Does that sound a little bit familiar? Liquidity. You will have on your test for this chapter a chart of accounts. You will not have another chart of accounts assignment between now and the test telling you now, make sure you look that over before the day of the test. That's going to be where most of people are going to lose your points. You're going to be really good at the rest of it because we're going to practice the rest of it a lot. Okay. So the rest of Chapter 4, basically what we're taking a look at is how do I know what my balance is for accounts receivable still in moments? Up until now, the only way I could figure out that information, bless you, is by going through and looking at every single journal page and finding Dylan moments and then figuring out adding and subtracting. If a customer calls, we should be able to give them that number instantaneously, not hours of work on our end. So what we have to do is we have to go through and do something called posting. And we post periodically. And the procedure of how you post is as important as that you get it done. So I'm going to show you the correct way of doing it. And if, you, if I see you doing it wrong, I will not help you when it doesn't come out. And I can tell if you do it just to get it done versus posting correctly. There's two different ways to think about it here. The procedure of how we do it is important. So we have this column on our journal called Post Reference. And I said, forget about it. We have a whole chapter. This is the chapter. What we have to do is we're going to go through and we're going to post our individual amounts. This goes to back to when we learned about our journal in our last chapter. Okay? In our journal in our last chapter, we have general accounts and then we have special accounts okay special accounts basically are columns that have account titles on them right so if they have account titles on them then we don't have to post them until we get to the end of the month and that's one of the joys and the beauty of having special account columns. It reduces the amount of posting that we need to do. Now, we don't have special columns for Mrs. Grassel Capital. We don't have special columns for advertising expense because we don't use those a lot. The ones that our business use a lot is, should be sales and cash because cash is kind of the ebb and the flow of every business of how things are going to rock and roll. So what we have to do is when we are posting individually, and that's important because we are going to be posting totals and posting individually. When we post individually, we are looking only at these two columns. And the whole entire purpose of posting is to take the information from our journal and update so I know what the balance is in that account. As the financial person, if I want to know how much money I've spent on advertising this year, I should be able to look in my what is called a ledger – and see exactly what I've spent. Okay, So a journal is nothing new, nothing fancy. We've seen that. On Friday, we went through and opened up a general ledger account. So I just want to go through and talk about one of these accounts again, or a ledger. Now, when we look at a ledger, we are not making our debits and credits equal on a ledger. We're just taking information from one spot and updating to give us a balance. I can't say that enough. Date column, item column. I'm going to tell you 95% of the time this item column is going to be left blank. When we need to learn about it, I'll tell you about it. Post reference. Post reference on both of these columns tell you where did you put it and where did you get it from. So we're always going to take our information from our journal and put it on our ledger. So on our journal, it's going to say where we put it with our account number, and on our ledger, it's going to say which journal page we got it from. So if we ever need to go back and double-check the transaction, that's what we can do. And then I have debit and credit here. This debit and credit here is the individual amount that I'm taking from my journal and I'm putting it here. This balance column is going to be a running math total. If I have two debits, I add. If I have two credits... I add. If I have a debit and I have a credit, what do I need to do? Are they the same? I'm going to need to subtract. 
My balance is going to be whatever one is bigger. And this is where it's really important that you know your normal balances. So, for example, if I look here, prepaid insurance, account classification is what? Asset. Another way that I would know that, let me look right here. My account number starts with a 1. All assets start with a 1. Liabilities, 2. Owner's equity, 3. Revenue, 4. Expenses, 5. So your account number helps to clue you into your classification. This should only have a debit balance. What if I went through and figured out that I had a credit balance? What does that tell you? Did you do it correctly? If you ever have a credit balance in an asset account, then you know you've done the math incorrectly or maybe journalized it incorrectly up above and posting it so it doesn't work. So we have to go through and start the top of our journal and we work down. And that's going to mean flipping back and forth here between our ledgers, but that's okay. The how of we do it is more important that, than, than just getting it done. You guys can plug yours back in now. So let's start at the very top. The very first line here, again, we are ignoring sales, cash debit, and cash credit columns. We're going to take it Leonard Witowski Capital. Right here, if I look in my general columns, how am I affecting Leonard Witowski Capital? A debit or a credit? Credit for how much? Do you see right here? Credit, 5000 They go together. I'm ignoring these columns. So I have to go down here in the bottom, and I'm going to find Leonard Witowski Capital. I'm opening it up. I need to take the date of its journalized transaction, which is March 1st. So I'm going to type in March 1st. I hit enter, then it asks for post-reference. Post-reference in your ledger means what page number did we get it from. So what page in our journal are we on? Do you see right here? Page 1. So I just enter in a 1 because that means I got it from page 1. Every month your journal page is going to go up. After your business is in, in practice for lots of years, you're going to have big numbers there, but it always helps you to go back. Now, all I do in this first one right here is I don't have to put anything here for debit. Just because there's a blank spot doesn't mean I need to put something there. Right here, I'm taking this $5,000 credit, and I'm putting it here as a $5,000 credit. I am not making debits and credits equal. I'm just taking my number from my journal, putting it in my ledger. Now I need to get my new balance. Before this transaction, what was my balance of capital? Zero. I just went through and credited it $5,000. So zero plus a credit of $5,000 give me a balance of $5,000 as a credit. I'm not making debits and credits equal. So my new balance now is 5000 So I just got the first line posted, and that's what it's called, taking it from my journal, going to my ledger. Now, the next thing I have to do is I have to go back to my journal. Would you agree? So I have to take this account number right here, 310, and this goes right here. That is the last thing you do. When you see 310 right there, that tells you this was posted to account 310. Do not ever go through and just fill in all of these numbers here. The last step is to take your account number and put it up there. This is the procedure of how you do it is important. So now let's say there's a fire drill. We leave. We come back. Where did we leave off? Can we tell what line we need to post right now? We need to post line two. If you go through and fill all these numbers in, do you know which ones you posted to? You do not. So that's another reason why it's really important. It's very easy to get interrupted in between when you're posting, and you've got to go through and do it there. So line two in my journal. Again, I'm only focusing on the numbers in my general column when I post individually. So when I look at line two, I'm affecting prepaid insurance. How much is prepaid insurance being affected by? 660 as a debit. So on the very bottom, I'm going to switch from Leonard Witowski Capital to prepaid insurance.
I'm going to fill in my month, which is March 3rd. My post reference is the page of the journal that I'm posting from, which is 1. And prepaid insurance, I am affecting it as a 660 debit because that's what this number is up here. So all I do is I take my 660 debit and I put it there first. What was my balance in prepaid insurance before this transaction? Zero. So zero plus a debit of 660 gives me a debit of 660. The last step that I always have to remember to do is take my account number 140 and it goes back onto my journal. Line three on my journal. In the account title it says supplies. Supplies is being affected as a debit for seventy-eight dollars. So I'm going to put in my account title of March, or excuse me, my date of March fourth. Post reference is one. And we can see that supplies is being debited for seventy-eight dollars. It previously had a zero balance, so a zero plus a debit of seventy-eight gives me a new balance of seventy-eight. And then I put account number one thirty back up top. Accounts payable Joshua supply, same thing, put in my month, the date, post reference one, it's being credited $78. Previously had a zero balance, so a zero plus a $78 credit is a credit for $78. Account number 210 goes back up on top. Line number five, remember in the last chapter when I told you if you don't use um, the general columns to put a check mark, here's the reason why. Do I need to post anything individually from this line? No. So we put a check mark there to show, hey, we don't have to post anything. If we leave it blank, it looks like we forgot about it. A check mark means, yep, I know, taken care of. I'm going to deal with these numbers as totals at the end of the month. But this is what I'm going to go through and post individually. So then we can jump right down to accounts receivable. Danielle Brasted. And we'll post to accounts receivable Danielle Brasted exactly like we did for the rest of them. Put in the date of the mo a month, which is March 9th. Post reference is 1. 163 debit. Previously had a zero balance. We're going to take 163 plus a debit of 163 is going to be 163. I think I said that number one too many times in there. Count number 120 goes back up on top. Line seven of your journal is rent expense. Line 8 is a little different. Make sure you stay with me on line 8. On line 8, we're affecting accounts payable Joshua supply, right? But what's different? This is the first one we've done that there's already been something filled in. Would you agree? So when we have something that's already been affected by this month, I only need to write the month once on the ledger. Okay, so just like on your journal, so I don't need to write the month in, I just have to put the date in. Again, the date is the 15th, post reference is still one, but accounts payable, Joshua Supply, right here I'm debiting it. So here it's going to go in as a debit of 50. Do not take this debit here 50 and put debit there 50, that's not the point. Balance means you have to do math. If I look here, what was my previous balance prior to this transaction? Credit of 78. Now I'm debiting at 50. Remember, two debits you add, two credits you add. A debit and credit you need to subtract. Do I have a debit or credit balance left over when I'm done? Well, you're right, Caleb. Why a credit? Yeah, my credit's bigger, right? So I'm going to have a credit balance of $28, right? 
So that's what goes here, 28. Do not think what you put here, you just put here on balance. The balance section, you need to do math. You just put it over there at the start because there was no previous balance. But you're going to have a lot more transactions that you're going to be posting that's going to have balances that you have to do the math on. The last thing you do is account number 210 back up on top. Same thing's going to hold to, true for Danielle Bradstead when you go to post to her. She already has a balance in there, so we just have to put the date in there. And she's being credited $100. So what is my new balance? Debit of 63. I like this easy math. Don't need a calculator. The last one that we're posting on this assignment is going to go to Leonard Witowski Cap. Excuse me, drawing. I said the wrong account title. March 25th. Post reference is a 1, and I'm going to debit for $1,000. It previously had a zero balance, so a zero plus a debit of 1,000 is going to be a debit of 1,000. Remember, drawing is a contra account to owner's equity. It has a debit normal balance because it takes away from the value of a business. Go ahead and check that answer. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. To find mistakes, sometimes you have to look at each one. Notice that it did give you some accounts that you don't have to use. But if you look at each one, that's going to show you your check marks there. Go ahead and do your on your own.